What is up guys? Happy New Year! 2019 is upon us. And this is going to be video number two in our series on asbestos. Now if you watched video number one, then we learned what exactly asbestos is. A highly toxic carcinogen that creates cancer and has been used in building materials for a long, long time. And that if you suspect you have asbestos in your home, you should have it tested prior to any remodel, removing popcorn ceilings, knocking down walls, and yes, even cleaning popcorn ceilings. So, let's talk about testing for asbestos. So who actually does the testing here? Well, because asbestos fibers are invisible to the naked eye, samples have to be submitted and sent to an EPA certified laboratory where they can actually be observed and looked at underneath a microscope. The problem is, is that doing the sample removal yourself can actually be very dangerous if not done properly and is actually also illegal in certain states in America and you could be heavily fined for it if you get caught. And in nearly all states, it's illegal to do sample removal if you live in some kind of attached housing like apartment complex, duplex, etc. In those circumstances, you'd have to have like an EPA certified contractor come out and do the sample removal for you. If, however, you live in a detached home, so just a regular house, and you find out your state does allow for DIY sample removal, then by all means, you have come to the right video. Okay, so let's talk about what kind of supplies you're going to need for this endeavor. First things first, you're going to need a good respirator. Now you want to make sure it has a NOSH rating of P100 and not N95. An N95 rating means that it filters 95% of the particles in the air, which means it allows 5% death to pass through. Seems pretty pointless to me. But a true P100 rating means that it filters 99.97% of particles 0.3 microns and above. Now how big are asbestos fibers? Asbestos fibers range anywhere from 0.7 microns all the way up to 90 microns. So if you have one of these P100 respirators, you are golden. If you have no idea where to start looking, I will actually leave one of these asbestos P100 respirators listed and linked down below for you. They're typically like 30-40 bucks. The next things you're going to need for this DIY project is a nice chisel or a knife, a spray bottle of water, a large Ziploc bag, this is where you're going to put your sample, a large trash bag, some disposable rubber gloves, paper towels, a sample of any kind of paint, a paintbrush, a pair of safety glasses, and oh yeah, some duct tape. Before we get started, I just want to say that this video is primarily for those of you taking a sample from like a textured wall or a popcorn ceiling. You know, if you're trying to take a sample from like an attic full of insulation and you're going to be crawling around all that insulation and stuff, then there's going to be some more safety precautions that you're going to need to take. You probably put on like a, an entire hazmat suit and an entire face mask just covering your whole entire face. Okay, let's get this show on the road. So, it's important you follow these steps exactly in the exact order as I have them laid out. So first, let's get the sample and then I'll tell you what to do with it. Step number one, make sure all children and pets are far, far away from the sampling area. Step number two, cut your ceiling fans off, shut all your windows, and turn your heater or your air condition into the off position. We're just making sure we don't have air circulating all through the room while we're taking our sample. Step number three, put on your respirator, safety glasses, and gloves. Step number four, we want to spray down the sample area with water and give it five to ten minutes to absorb and get nice and soft for us. This will just make it easier to scrape off and make it less messy. Spraying it down with water also has another purpose and that is to minimize the dust that might be created during this process because hey, wet dust can't fly. Think about it, you ever driven down a dirt road on a nice sunny day and see all the dust flying up behind you? Drive down that exact same road when it's raining and you ain't going to see nothing in the air. Step number five, hold your bag up to the ceiling, grab your chisel and scrape you off a small little piece into the bag. You're only going to need about a tablespoon per sample. Step number six, zip it shut. Step number seven, grab a damp paper towel, wipe down your sample bag really, really well, and then dispose of that damp paper towel into your trash bag. Step number eight, grab you a Sharpie or some kind of permanent marker, and we're going to need to write some information on our sample bag. You're going to write the date, 
where the sample was taken, and also give the sample some kind of unique ID, like sample one, two, three, etc. If you do that, repeat the process a couple more times. I recommend taking like three samples per room. Step number nine, and very important step, grab your paint sample from like Home Depot, real cheap, a couple bucks, any kind of paint will do. Grab your paintbrush, and what you're gonna do is put on a thick, thorough layer of paint from wherever you took the sample from. And what this is gonna do is just seal that area back off. So you ain't gotta worry about asbestos exposure in the days to come. And also, once you finish applying the paint to the sample area, take the paintbrush, throw it away in the trash. Step number 10, while you're wearing all your gear still, so you still got your respirator on and your gloves and your glasses, take your damp paper towel or a damp cloth. Now you might have to lay these out ahead of time a few damp cloths, a few damp paper towels ahead of time. But either way, grab you one and while you're wearing your gear, just wipe down your respirator and take off your, your uh, safety glasses, wipe them down, wipe down your, your hands, wipe down your arms. Nothing crazy, you just, just kind of give yourself a superficial wipe down. So wipe down your shirt and your body and your pants and then take that paper towel or that cloth and dispose of it into your trash bag. Step number 11, Take your respirator and the HEPA cartridges that are inside, you need to throw away into the trash bag. Whenever they're used only one time for asbestos removal, they're considered contaminated. And you should consider them asbestos waste. So, remove them, throw them in the trash bag, along with your disposable rubber gloves. And step number 12, take your duct tape and tape up and seal off that trash bag. From that point, you're going to need to check with your state and see where you can actually take this because you can't just take asbestos waste to a landfill. So now, what do we do with our wonderful samples? What you're going to do is go to a website called asbestostesting.com. I'll leave a link down below. The name of the company is Western Analytical Laboratory. They're out in California. They're EPA certified so they know what they're doing and they're going to be able to give you accurate results. I think they charge like 30 bucks for the first sample and then 20 bucks for every sample after that. Just go to their website, it's all simple, step by step, follow the steps, and then what you're going to do on that website is they're going to basically guide you through a process of filling out a submittal form. Fill that form out, mail them the samples, and then sit back and wait for your results. And from that point, you're going to know for certain if you indeed have asbestos to deal with. So that's it. That's all I got for you guys. Thanks so much for checking out the video. If you found it valuable and you liked it, give it a big clean with confidence. Thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel for more great content. And until next time, guys, I'll be back with video number three in our series here on asbestos. And we're going to talk about what to do if the test does indeed come back positive as we dive into asbestos removal.